Hi everybody. So this week we started the holy season of Lent, which represents the 40 days that Jesus was in the desert uh, being tempted by Satan and surrounded by angels to help him resist temptation. As we read in this week's gospel um, from Mark, chapter 1, verses 12 to 15, Jesus was sent into the desert by the Holy Spirit. Um, and then at the end of the 40 days, after he'd resisted temptation, he went out and he began proclaiming the good news, letting people know that the time of fulfillment had come and the kingdom of God was there. Uh, he called on everyone to turn away from their sins. Lent actually comes from an old English word, lengthen, which means spring. And even now, it is a time for us to turn away from sin and grow closer to God. We can change our poor habits during Lent. We can help people in need, pray for God's help, ask for his forgiveness. And Lent is a time for preparation. Uh, we are preparing for Easter, right? The most important feast of the whole year because it celebrates Jesus' resurrection from the dead. So with that, let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Loving God, every year you bring the world back to life in the springtime. Lent is springtime in our hearts. Help us grow in love for you, for all creation, and for one another. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So uh, if you take a look at this week's venture for February 21st, um, the cover here, we walk with Jesus during Lent. I'm just going to walk through um, the answers for you quickly. So Jesus rose from the dead on Easter Sunday. Christians keep Lent by prayer, good works, and fasting. On Fridays during Lent, Catholics abstain from eating meat. We celebrate Jesus' Last Supper on Holy Thursday. At the Easter Vigil, catechumens receive the sacrament of baptism. And then a cross. During Lent, we pray the Stations of the Cross. The 40 days before Easter are called Lent. The story of Noah and the flood is in the book of the Bible called Genesis. The Sunday before Easter is called Palm or Passion Sunday. And the first day of Lent is Ash Wednesday which we obviously just had. Um, so as we celebrated Ash Wednesday, hopefully you all thought about a Lenten resolution. Um, this can be something that you wanna give up to sacrifice, or it can also um, be something positive that you want to start doing. It's not simply a time of deprivation uh, during Lent, but it's also a time of creating the best version of yourselves. And so creating better habits is an alternative um, to maybe giving up dessert or too much TV. Jesus showed us during the 40 days in the desert how to face temptation by obeying what God wants and resisting the devil. And um, I found this online. If any of you are interested, feel free to have your parents reach out to me. But there are several of these um, images, and they all have kind of 40 different pieces. So 40 leaves, 40 grapes, 40 scales on the fish, 40 thorns. And it's just an, a visual way to kind of track how well you're doing um, with your Lenten resolution over the 40 days. Like I said, feel free to have your parents email me and I'm happy to send a copy of this um, along to you if you think that that visual would help you guys um, resist temptation and track how well you're doing. Um, apparently the two different colors that you use, you color them one color if you met your goal that day so you successfully didn't have that dessert or um, if you did you know, something positive that you're trying to create a new good habit for. Um, so I also recently read about another idea, which is to get out your calendar and write the name of one person. It could be a family member, a friend, a neighbor, a teammate, uh, a teacher, a coach, an acquaintance, or someone you don't even know very well. And you write their name down on your calendar uh, every day for the 40 days of Lent. And every day you offer prayers or petitions for that one person. Um, you ask God to help them with their struggles their hope, faith, family, health, whatever is, you know, bothering their soul um, at the time and would benefit from your intercession. So especially during Lent, we are called to come together and help one another bear each other's crosses, if you will, so that at the end of the 40 days, we can come together and rejoice in Easter um, as brothers and sisters through the risen Christ. During Lent, we hear several of the great stories um, in the Old Testament, as you saw in Venture, um, including the first reading this week, right, which was about the flood, which destroyed everything and everyone in the world except for Noah and his family. 
And if you pull out your books um, and you flip to page number six, I'm gonna read uh, this number two to you. God wants to be close to people. God has always spoken with people through both words and actions. Our first parents enjoyed daily conversation with God until they sinned. After their fall from grace, they lost some of their closeness to God. God promised, however, that one day they and their offspring would be saved from sin and the damage it does. Human beings again would enjoy perfect closeness to God. As time passed, people grew tired of waiting for salvation, though, and most turned to evil ways. God decided the earth needed a fresh start, so he destroyed it with a great flood. The only ones God spared were a good man named Noah, his family, and the animals Noah had gathered together. After the flood, God made an agreement, or covenant, with Noah. God promised never again to destroy the world by water and set a rainbow in the sky as a sign of his promise. Later, God made another covenant, this time with a man named Abraham. God chose Abraham to be the father of the Hebrew people and asked him to move to another country. Abraham did everything God asked of him, and so he was blessed with good land and many offspring. After more time passed, God made a covenant with the Hebrews through Moses. God gave this great prophet the Ten Commandments. The Hebrews agreed to follow these commandments, and God agreed to be their God forever and to watch over them. Finally, the time came when God made himself known fully through Jesus, his only son. In Jesus, God made a new and everlasting covenant with people. Through Jesus, anyone could gain the salvation promised long ago to humankind. You became part of this new and everlasting covenant with God when you were baptized. You became part of the body of Christ. You were blessed with a special closeness to God. So remember um, that you became part of this new and everlasting covenant with God when you were baptized. Um, and your parents and your godparents promised on your behalf to raise you as children of God. Covenant is another word for an agreement um, between hu two human beings or between God and human beings and involves a two-way exchange of promises. After the flood, God promised Noah, as you just heard, um, saying, I set my rainbow in the clouds as a sign for the earth that never again will I destroy all living creatures with a flood. The flood washed away sin, just as the waters of baptism um, do for us, and promised a new life and membership in God's family. So as spring approaches, uh, with Easter being an, uh, an awaited celebration of Jesus's resurrection and ascension, it's a time for us to reflect on our covenant with God and how well we've been obeying the Ten Commandments and loving our neighbors. So last week we did not have class, obviously, um, but the gospel last week was about a time when Jesus actually healed a leper. Now, back in Jesus's time, a leper had to live away from the rest of the community because the disease was, was unknown, it was highly contagious, and um, lepers had to actually cover their face and shout unclean when people came by um, to warn them. And so in healing the leper, Jesus showed us that no one is outside the love of God. All people are loved by God and deserve our love and respect, even when we don't like them or uh, agree with them. There are often people around us um, or around who are considered outsiders. And those people are, you know, the homeless, um, sometimes the, the poor or the sick. And what we need to remember is they are all, we are all worthy of love and respect. And to have harmony, we need to ensure that we care for each person and therefore the common good. So when Jesus healed the leper, he helped not only the man, but the whole community. And sometimes we often, um, sometimes we overlook the people who do good deeds. But during Lent, I'm just asking that you think about these local heroes um, and perhaps include them in the list of people that you're praying for. Maybe the first responders, the nurses and the doctors and um, think about some good deeds that you could do. So um, there are six weeks in Lent and six kinds of prayer, blessing and adoration, petition, intercession, thanksgiving, praise, and contrition, and we'll focus on one of those each week. So this, this week we'll focus on contrition. Loving God, please forgive us for turning a blind eye sometimes to people around us who need our help. When we fail to step in and help someone being bullied, share with those less fortunate. We fail our neighbor and you. Please help us to notice the people on the outside of things, the people who most need our compassion and care. Send your Holy Spirit to fill us with your love. Amen. Have a wonderful week. Think about those Lenten um, commitments, and I um, will see you guys next week. Take care.